Hi guys, welcome to today's session. I am Manoj, the host of the seminar. I am from the student welfare team of GREH and today we will be discussing about 7 steps to MS in US. And this is actually most prominent topic which most of the students like to know. Because most of the students are confused about which country to go for, for their MS or higher studies. And what are the opportunities they have in US. So this is what we are going to discuss today. And what you have to do before you have you apply for the university so that is going to be the major criteria of discussion today so why studying in US is going to help you US has a wider choice of universities and specializations there are many top universities that accepts all students from various countries and various continents so you can find many students from your own country and you'll be having a better international exposure in US and US is always open for cultural diversity so you will not have a bigger cultural shock when you move into US so it will be more of uh, the people whom you see always in our country so US is normal normally forefront in research and industry collaboration US is always five years ahead of India in all the research and development so now you would know like why US is much ahead of other countries when it comes to MS so what other things we would be discussing here? So what are the concerns the students have? The first concern is higher cost. Is the price which he is going to pay for the university is going to be much much higher than what he is going to pay in India. Do I have sufficient academic achievements? What academic scores should I have? What should I do in GRE? How much score should I get in GRE? Should I write any other uh, competitive exams like TOEFL or IELTS to get into universities and which university should I apply for so this is one of the biggest doubts like many of the students have even though they get a good GRE score they are always confused with which university should I apply for and finally the visa process even though you have completed everything you have a I-20 and you have everything the visa process is going to be a real criteria where it gives you the final step to get into your university and then the application process which comes under which university should I apply for after that immediately you have to think about the statement of purpose transcripts grade points GRE and TOEFL so we will be discussing very brief about all these things in the upcoming slides so what are the seven steps to MS which we are going to discuss in this session First one is academic achievements, the grades or marks that is required and the projects and paper publication which you have to do before you apply for the university. The second one is GRE and TOEFL scores, how much GRE and TOEFL score you have to get so that you can apply for the top universities in US. Selection of university, so most of the students select university just based on the grades they have or just based on the GRE score. There are many other criteria which are there for selection of your universities letter of recommendation so LOR most of the students think letter of recommendation is normally given by the professor from his college but there is certain restriction which is involved in that so we will also discuss brief about that in this topic today and statement of purpose so most of us know doesn't know what statement of purpose means so we will be discussing about what statement of purpose is and what is required to have a better statement of purpose and how much finance you should have to get into US universities finally the visa process so we will be discussing all these major things and these are the most important seven steps to MS in US starting from your academics till your visa process so going ahead with the first one academics so Normally it's what you guys know, basically having a good G CGP and undergraduate programs. Make sure that you, are, uh, you know what is the top of CGP and also you try to make sure you get a decent CGP in your uh, academics. Try to make sure you improve your scores in your third and fourth year in your college. That is the most important year where you can improve your scores. And you should work on good and relevant topic which is very related to your core subject or which you are planning to do your masters in abroad so it's not that if you don't do uh, your project very well it is going to affect you actually like you might have troubles when you don't do a project in your core area 
So it's not that your project is going to be uh, taken lightly in your admission process. And you should always publish a paper and do intern. So publishing a paper is really important that can help you better in your SOPs and have a good rapport with your professors. So it's all about you should have a better interaction with your college staffs and you should have a better uh, knowledge about what you are going to choose for your higher studies so that you can plan it from day one itself. And next is GRE and TOEFL score. So a score of 320 plus is considered to be a superb score in GRE. So you can aim for all the top universities in case your academic scores are really less, lower than the expected level. So you can make sure that you improve your GRE score so that that is considered much uh, prior in the universities. So increasing your GRE scores always increases your chance of getting in the admission into a good ranked university. So make sure that if you get a good GRE score, you have a very good chance of even getting a good scholarship. So TOEFL and IELTS is required for each university based on their university's deadlines. So most of the universities who are affiliated with United States, they ask for TOEFL. And the most of the universities who are affiliated with the British Council, they ask for IELTS. So it is based on different deadlines. Each university asks for a different kind of competitive exam. And TOEFL and IELTS is just an additional part where you can show your scores and that would give you an additional benefit for your profile. So getting into university selection. So most of the students are puzzled about university selection. So most of us just think about what is the course offered in the particular university and make a good research about what all course we have to opt for. So it's not just the course offered guys, it's much more than that. So it's the rank of the university, even though if you know the course of the course of the university which is offered to you, you might also think about the rank of the university for the particular course offered. It's not the overall ranking, you should see the ranking for the, your particular course and the facility provided. So what are the extra facilities provided by the university? The facility, facilities like sports facilities, your living facilities and there are various other facilities like clubs which is for different uh, pe uh, people from the different nations. So you have to look into all these things. It's not just the course that is offered to you. And internships. Normally in fall admissions there would be a good opportunity for a number of internships and spring or spring admissions you will have a decent opportunities for internship. So you should look into which admissions you are planning for and make sure that you have a very good internship opportunity which is available in your university. Placement and internship are normally related to each other. If you have a very good internship in a top university maybe you would have a better opportunity to get into a, a good job in where you are doing your internship itself. So make sure you find an internship in a good company so that you can get placed there itself. International student population. So you have to know how many students are from your particular locality. You cannot feel like a standalone person in a university whom you do not know anyone and everyone is new. So there are Indian students around all the universities in US and make sure that you locate all the Indian students when you reach the university or before you reach the university. So that would help you to understand the current scenario in that particular locality than the university. Accommodation. So normally many universities provide accommodation for the students but even though the accommodation is provided the standard of living is going to be much more higher. You cannot accommodate yourself in New York directly when you are studying in a New York State University. So you should make sure that you find a better accommodation that is well enough to your standard of living. Tuition fees. So course offered would also give you what is the particular tuition fees for those particular courses. So make sure that you make a brief research when you 
when you look into course offered so that you can look into the rank of the courses globally and also the tuition fees offered cost of living well i spoke about accommodation cost of living was part of it so you might have an opportunity to come back to india in your uh, two years of your ms and they might be your living expense there are many other expenses you, have, you will incur so kindly make sure that before you start to your university make a clear plan of your cost of living and the climatic condition last but not least climatic condition is going to change your entire scenario when you go to us so if you are not so comfortable with the climate that is going to affect your entire ms so people who are not so good with a cold or highly chill climate please avoid northern part of united states always opt for the south, southern part of united states which is always pretty normal climate and which is warm if you choose michigan or uh, places near canada you might feel a dig, uh, very cold degree out there so what is letter of recommendation so when you have a very good uh, rapport with your professors when you do a paper publication or when you are having a project guide who's helping you with a project they would know much better about you like how intellectual you are and what is your ability to communicate your self-reliance your independent level so your professors must know much about you, you cannot ask an ex-professor to give an ex-statement about you. you should ask your own professor who knows much about you and much about your project so that he would give a better letter of recommendation for a working professional make sure that you get a letter of recommendation from your manager or a team leader that would actually help you to seal a point that you are working for these many years so normally each university will ask for at least two or three LORs. so be prepared with your LOA when you start preparing for your GRE itself statement of purpose so this is going to be a keen watch for the admission council in the universities so they would look into what actually motivates to apply for this particular university and what is motivating you to do higher studies and what is your area of interest and why you exactly came to this particular country for this particular course they will be looking into more detailed aspect like how many years you will be staying there and what is your goal studying uh, your ms or phd in us and why you are choosing that particular university and that particular course so you should have a clear statement in front of them so that they would be very clear about all these aspects maybe you can note down this guys you can just pause the video and note down this for a couple of seconds At the meantime, I have to give you a small note. This session is a recorded version of our online seminar. This is not the live seminar. I request you all to click on a button below, register for the online seminar. So you can attend the live online seminars where you can directly ask your doubts to me and your doubts will be instantly cleared by us. So attending a live online seminar is always better than hearing a recorded online seminar. So I will move ahead guys, hope you have returned all these things in your note. Finance, so what is your total expense? Your tuition fees plus living expenses, just as simple as that. But you have to make a very good calculation before you get into your university. What's your tuition fees? What is going to be your living expense for the first year? And how you are going to manage it in the second year? So normally students would get stipend or tuition fee waiver from uh, most of the universities who pro, who have been submitted a very good GRE fellowships and scholarships are provided for all the students who have a very good uh, GRE score and also show a very good attitude in your university so people who are from India directly they opt for education loans or self-funding from their parents or their guardians so this is going to be the finance aspect of your preparation so you should make sure that you have a very good financial plan and you should have a very good financial planner who is helping you in it. Every university might not provide you a scholarship so that you might have to take an education loan and then you have to apply for the scholarship. Most of the universities do provide scholarship based on your performance in your second year. So don't lose your hope. You can also be a research assistant. You can earn in your own university. So these are the incomes you can earn in your university. You can work in your library, you can work in uh, under a staff, you can work in your college clubs. 
there are many areas where you can work in a university where you can earn so this is how the society is built in us guys so let's go ahead with the visa process so what does a visa officer look for so he actually looks for the most important thing how genuine your applicant is and how genuine is your application process is are, are you eligible for application for the us university so these are the most important thing they will look at look on you so make sure that you have all the documents with you at the correct time so that you don't fumble before your visa officer always make sure that you have a future plan before you go to the visa officer so that you can explain him what is going to be your plan after your ms will you be returning back to india or you will be staying in us for the couple of years you can be open to them you can be always be positive to them it need not that you should lie that i will come back to india after my ms do not be like that you can just say like i will be there in us for a couple of years after my graduation they would be happy to hear that and the final thing they would notice on your application is are you having enough and sufficient funding what is your source of funding so if you clear that then your visa is approved so these are the most important things in your visa process so finally i would like to summary summarize on the entire seminar which we had so make sure that you target a high gre score and you have a better research about all the universities so i hope you noted down what all the research criteria of the university build a good rapport with your professors and hod make sure that you started from now onwards and take your gre on september or october even taking a gre in august is well and good guys you have enough time don't just make that your gre started on november and you have pushing yourself for application process most of the scholarship deadlines would be on november end itself so apply to the universities as early as possible so that you have a chance of getting a scholarship and admit make a well balanced plan of gre academics and university application so don't just think gre is going to take you to universities actually mixture of everything gre is just a stepping stone for your admission process hope you guys have understood how this seven step for ms would help you in and i hope like you have taken a better notes of all these things so this could help you even after few days for you and i would also put one more statement to you like how grh can help you in the admission process so you need a admission counselor who can help you in all the process because you have to shortlist universities and you have to have a better sop and lor based on the university guidelines so you are admission counselor will have a orientation call before you start with your admission process and then they will be helping you with your profile analysis and creating your target university so you will be having three types of universities moderate universities safe universities and ambitious universities safe universities you have 90% chance of getting admits in the universities and moderate universities you have at least 50% chance of getting into universities ambitious universities are the top notch universities where you have a very minimum chance but you have a bigger chance of getting into the university so your university deadlines will be based on all these categories your trainers would be helping you with your sop and lor guidance so there would be a particular set of team who would be helping you drafting your sop and lor based on the university requirement meantime your counselors will be helping you in finalizing your universities based on safe moderate and ambitious universities so all put together your sop lor finalizing the universities documents all to put together we would create an account in university and then we would be uploading all your documents in the university website and we would be helping you in tracking all your admission process your financial and visa processing would be your final stage where your trainers would be helping you with your financial documents your admission counselor will be having a keen look at your financial documents so that your visa process is also simple enough so you will be having a visa mock interview before you take your real visa interview with the counselors of grh and you will be having a pre departure orientation also with your gre counselors so below you will be having an option to click to know more about your admission counseling so that this would help you to know more about what grh admission counseling is and you can request a contact us from that particular page so our admission counselors will be happy enough to contact you and clear all your 
So we have come to the end of the session, guys. You can contact us always at 9845959590 or you can email us to student.welfare.grh.com. Hope you had a very good session and this would help you a lot. So thanks a lot for uh, giving your time to us. Have a good day.